proteins are everywhere, in food, cosmetics, but most importantly in all living beings, in plants, animals and of course humans. There they play an important role in growth, brain function, healing and many other things. So what are proteins? Proteins are special molecules that are made from our genetic code as chains of amino acids that can fold up into three-dimensional structures. For the many processes in the living cell, there are thousands of different proteins with different shapes and sizes. Science has shown that the three-dimensional structure of the protein is important for its function and the protein data bank now contains a large number of protein structures. All these structures have helped us understand how proteins work. For example, it is now possible to create drugs that match the shape of proteins and so treat diseases. We call this a lock and key mechanism. Proteins also have flexible parts, for example to bind to other proteins. So-called hub proteins have many binding partners and change their shape depending on which partner they bind to. The importance of proteins' plasticity and flexibility is seen by the rapid increase in the number of reports about disorder in proteins. In fact, disorder has often been described in literature in many different terms and one wonders why it took so long to realize that it is a research field in its own right. Only recently a single name was agreed on that shows how important it is. Intrinsically disordered proteins, or IDPs. To illustrate flexibility in proteins, let's look at what happens when a protein unfolds. Where the folded form has a more or less fixed shape, the unfolded one looks like a flexible string that constantly changes shape. Such flexibility is very important. For example, in binding of two proteins where one has to adapt to the shape of the other. In diseases like Parkinson, Alzheimer and Prion disease, healthy proteins unfold and refold into a different shape. For example, prion proteins normally contain helical structures that can change into a disease form with so-called beta sheets. These proteins then assemble into fibrillar aggregates, causing plaques to be formed in the brain. Disorder in proteins is so important that it is encoded in our genetic code from which we can predict whether proteins are likely to become intrinsically disordered. So how do you study something that is always changing shape? IDPs pose big challenges and many different techniques are used in this field of research. The IDP by NMR project is a project financed by the European Union under the Marie Curie programme with partners from top research institutes and companies from all over Europe. It focuses on improving the tools to study IDPs, in particular nuclear magnetic resonance, small angle X-ray scattering and genome searching. The most important technique and central to the project is NMR, but research typically starts with searching genomes. These genome searches are done by using sophisticated algorithms that analyze the vast amount of genetic data in genome databases. Any target proteins that are found are then evaluated for suitability for further research. Suitable target proteins are then produced in the lab for experimental analysis. The gene of a target protein is inserted into bacteria that are programmed to produce large amounts of the protein itself. After growing the bacteria, the protein is extracted, purified and concentrated into a laboratory sample. With the sample ready, it is time for investigating the protein with NMR. NMR works by placing proteins inside a strong magnet, where their atoms start behaving like magnets themselves. Radiating the proteins with electromagnetic radiation triggers the atoms to return radio frequency signals, a so-called NMR spectrum, each telling us something about the structure of the protein in atomic detail. Using advanced computational methods, the signals are then interpreted so we can study the structure and dynamics of proteins on the atomic level. Nowadays, not only purified proteins can be studied by NMR, with in-cell NMR, it is now possible to study proteins under more realistic conditions, directly in the living cell where the conditions are very different and proteins interact with other molecules. 
Another important research technique in the project is SACS. In synchrotrons, X-rays are aimed at protein molecules where they bounce off to a photographic detector. The SACS pattern depends on the shape of the molecule and using computational methods, the pattern is transformed into a three-dimensional model of the protein. So where NMR provides information in atomic detail, SACS is a very powerful technique for determining the changes in the global shapes of proteins. The IDP by NMR project has used a range of selected techniques for analyzing intrinsically disordered proteins and important progress has been made. One of the main problems of IDPs is that their NMR signals are very similar and it was needed to develop new experiments that can deal with that. The trick is to go into higher dimensions. For proteins that are well folded, going to three dimensions is usually enough, but not for IDPs. For IDPs, we have to go into four dimensions or even five dimensions to separate all the signals. Now that this is doable, these techniques can be applied on different research areas. One of these areas is research on viruses. Viruses have small genomes, so they need to be economical. Their proteins therefore use short disordered stretches of amino acids, called SLIMs, to interact with partners. The project has now characterized several SLIMs of viral proteins from hepatitis C, a human papillomavirus, and an adenovirus, as well as the human proteins with which they interact. So it has laid the basis for further drug design research by targeting the disordered parts of proteins rather than focusing on fixed structures. The project has also created a special database dedicated to IDPs, the PEDB. The PEDB is a starting point for further analysis of the dynamic behavior of IDPs and adds the dimension of disorder to structure. Where most structures in the PDB have well-defined forms, those in the PEDB have no fixed forms, posing big and interesting challenges for future research. Most of the experts in the field, together with members of the IDP by NMR network, gathered to discuss about progress and perspectives in the field on the coast of Tuscany in a beautiful pine wood on the seaside. An ideal setting for signs and people, where curiosity and enthusiasm of young people mingles with the experience of established researchers. A reflection of the project which has resulted in a successful training program that has prepared the first fellows for the next steps in their career. And the network is getting ready for the next challenges. The relaxing atmosphere provided the perfect occasion to ask the experts in the field about their feelings and future perspectives, about anecdotes and turning points in the scientific field, about open problems and difficulties to be overcome. So if you are curious, just enjoy listening to the interviews on the IDP by NMR website.